Perez and this is Memoirs with a Fat Girl and today I have this amazing person here with me. This is Chris Jackson and he is from Co Coaching, Coaching and Counseling, Counseling in Connecticut, Connecticut. Yeah. Yes. and he is here because he's also, um, a, you're, you also teach nutrition and mm -hmm. all of the things besides just the coaching, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. yeah besides Tell the coaching. Tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so like physical, emotional, mental part of creating a transformation. Yeah. So I really focus on the mental and emotional part because that's what's going to drive the behaviors and the actions to actually take care of yourself. Right. So I do that right. with the Coaching Counseling Connecticut, just working around the emotional and mental side of making a change. But I actually also work out of a company called Fatburn. Okay. It's located yeah. in downtown Stanford and downtown White Plains. And that's where people actually come and do the group fitness and they do the that's accountability awesome. coaching, weigh in and all that type it's of like stuff. It's like a whole well. like a whole thing, right? Yeah. Like they do everything. Yeah. Exactly. So in in um, in coaching and counseling in Connecticut, you're more focused on the, the mental aspect or you do physical things yes. as well? No, no, no. It's all more all mental. yeah, all the mental stuff. Yeah. Right. All the thought process. Good. Mm -hmm. And the reason why Chris is here is because I have this awful habit of self-sabotaging. And uh, those of you who follow me know that I have a part of the website that says Confessions Corner. And I already just did one uh, just the other day about eating an entire box of Fig Newton. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what flavor? Uh, I, figs. I like the oh, original, figs. The original Fig Newton. Yeah. It, so, um, <laughs> it's awful. It's awful. But it's on there. And it's mindless eating. You know, like I was on my computer working, and as I'm working, I'm digging into the box yep. instead of just taking out the portion, which was, by the way, two cookies. And I oh, ate okay. The box. Gotcha. So I ate ten portions. Wow. Ten portions. What? So this is why we're here. So why we are I'm gonna why we're talking about self sabotaging behaviors and how we can kind of try to overcome that a little bit. We are mm -hmm. also going to make a recipe that Chris wanted to make, and it's something super simple. So you guys can have it as a go-to, go to it really quickly. Uh, if you guys want a recipe that's like um, more in depth, like I can make your homemade arrabiata sauce, but this is actually just the brand that he prefers from Whole Foods. But we also have the spiralized zucchini, which is already spiralized. But I do, I do have a spiralizer here, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So why don't you go ahead and start that, uh, you know, tell me what you want me to help you with here. Yeah, got it. So I like this recipe because I like convenience yes. and I also love pasta. So how can we keep the carb count down? That's when we're gonna go to a vegetable like zucchini and they're, you know, now they're zoodles, right? Mm -hmm. But convenience is get them already packaged. Mm -hmm. Will you pay a little bit more? Yes, but you would save time. And right, if you have right, a really right. busy schedule, you can just plug and play when it comes to this type of stuff right here. Do you like to eat them raw or do you like to cook them? Cook them. You do, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like saute them real quick? Yeah, or saute them real Perfect. quick. And you can put it with like onions, mushrooms, like you can get mm -hmm. crazy with it. Yeah, I, I, may, I use them all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love those. And I also like spaghetti squash. Spaghetti squash is good yeah, too. It's yeah, really good. Yeah. And you can do the mixture of the yeah. both as well. You yeah. just always play with it. Yeah. The main thing with like pasta, um, that, which is pasta dishes, mm -hmm. people really love the sauce, mm -hmm. right? And they also love the stuff that goes in the sauce. Right, right, the right. pasta is kind of like the binder that puts it all together, yeah. but that's the part that can get us in trouble, yeah. right? Makes us sleepy, gain some weight, stuff right. like that. It's addicting, it's like right. really great. But like in paleo, when they talk about just like staying away from the carbohydrates and things right. like that, um, what they're really saying is just make amazing like meatballs or turkey balls or you know salmon whatever you want Throw that type of sauce that you want on top of it right. go ahead and cook up some uh, vegetables some spices That's what you really want. Okay. The pasta is kind of like the filler. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So it feels sure. clean You're gonna eat more mm -hmm. nutrition that way more protein. I mean a lot of amino acids in protein the building mm -hmm. blocks of muscle um, and our brain has a lot of you know amino acids in it, so we need to have as much carbs as possible. If you have one serving of this, it's four ounces. Um, four ounces is one serving, which will give you 21 grams of protein. Okay. So I put a lot of women on a 21 gram of meal per meal protein type of plan. Per meal. Per meal. Okay. Now it depends. You can be like four ounces, four and a half ounces, three and a half ounces, but most people play right there between three and a half ounces, four and a half ounces. And that's every meal. Every meal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Not like one time a day. Not like 21 grams of protein right, a day. It's right. far too few. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Per meal. So you're good to go. Like when you cook this up and you go ahead and divvy it out to your family or if you live by yourself, you'll have some leftovers. Cook once, eat two, three times, mm -hmm. and you'll be ready to, you'll be ready to rock. Yeah. All right. So let's so, make this simple recipe. I'll let's help do you. it. All right. So you do the onion. I'll okay. smash the garlic. All right. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. This is how, how we are going to make meatballs. The best part of the pasta. Of course. 
Now, I'm half Italian, but, and I'm addicted to pasta sauce. I just love <laughs> tomatoes. Me too. <laughs> tomatoes, <laughs> pasta okay, sauce, everything. I'm not addicted to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's why you're here. Exactly. <laughs> so, let me put this So, we got this garlic clove, okay? Now, if you don't have, like, one of those uh, garlic presses, I don't have one. I should get one mm -hmm. for the amount of times that I actually cook pasta. My wife is allergic to garlic, so I gave her garlic, no, like, really? a long time ago. Oh, no. But now it's back on the menu. Oh, I'm just gonna cook that? it. No, she can't. Oh, just cook it separate. Shoot. So I just take a flat knife, like so. Bam! I put the clove. I put it on top. That has to be really hard for her when yeah. she goes out to eat. Super hard, and yeah. she is so. I don't allergic. think I've ever heard of that before. She's so allergic to it that she will get like nosebleeds, sneeze all night, stay oh, up all night. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it's poor really thing. I know. I did not know that. Yeah. Awesome. And she gets at my restaurant, so. <laughs> which I ate yesterday, which right. was amazing. <laughs> Loved it. You had some fusion Thai type of. Uh, this is Asian infusion, Indian something something there yesterday. Tasted. <laughs> we it had good. so much stuff there yesterday. Yeah, it was so good. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, so the reason I have Chris here and the reason I want to talk to you, Chris, is because I know that you are really, really good at motivating people. Mm -hmm. I know um, when, when uh, a while back before I, um, you know, slacked on you, <laughs> um, and I'll just admit it, that's what I did. Um, <laughs> He's too, he makes you too accountable. And sometimes when you're a fat girl, you don't want to be freaking accountable. Uh, <laughs> so, um, one thing that he made me do when he was um, uh, coaching me through uh, health, which as you can see, I let go of, and that's why we're back here. Okay. And um, he would call me or make me do a video every day on my walks. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. And um, and he would make me. <laughs> he would actually make. I had to be outside. Uh -huh. These are the requirements. I had to be outside. It had to be videotaped in real time. Mm -hmm. And um, it had. I had to like do it when I was leaving, and then do it when I was coming back, so he would know that that's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So it's not like I could just go outside, chill out, come yeah, back, yeah. you know. I had to actually be walking away from the house. So <laughs> and, and I, once you're walking, you you just keep going. Mm -hmm. you know? And then when you did it at first, you did it by yourself, right? Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, and then I dragged my husband into it. Yeah, but not even drag. <laughs> I thought he wanted to. He like, did. He After a while, he was like, okay, okay, I could do this. Right. And then we started taking the dogs, and then the dogs would see me come home and they were like, We're going for a walk. That stopped. Um so <laughs> But see the influence that you had though? It was actually really good. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it. Um, awesome. Yeah, and you know, you were very good with making us accountable. So the reason I wanted you for this topic mm -hmm. is because I believe that you were, you were really, really good at like pointing some truths out and then helping us with the flaws of it, right? Yes. So one of the things that I have is the self-sabotaging behavior. and. I talk to a lot of people who have the same thing, mm -hmm. um, so I thought this would be a very important topic. Okay, perfect. So one of the things that I have seen across the board, not just with me, but with other fat people, yeah. is that we we get to a point where we feel good about what we're doing and then we sabotage it, okay. you know? So like, let's use the walking as an example. I was doing that for a couple months and I was feeling good and I had even a group of women then coming with me at some point to the to the track. Yep. And then I just, I felt good, I lost the weight and everything and then I just stopped. Got you it. know what I mean? Like you just... Right, it's like checklist? Yeah, checklist like checklist, done. yeah. Oh, right. I lost a couple pounds, great, I feel good. Let me have that ice cream. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't like, um, and maybe this is wrong, uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't always like the um, reward system. Okay. Because I feel like I, in my brain, mm -hmm. go for the worst reward. In your brain, you go for the worst yeah, reward. Yeah, like instead of me going for the reward of, I don't know, a new outfit. Okay. Or uh, uh, for a nice walk or something as a reward, sure. I end up, I want ice cream, cookies, cake. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That is like the reward part. So I don't know what that is. Hmm. And I don't know why it is that every time you feel good, yes, you know, Italian, Italian seasoning. seasoning, organic. Yes. Go ahead. Every time that you feel good, why is it that we go through this thing where we start self sabotaging? Because you feel good and you want to feel even better. It's like dosage, right? It's like, say, somebody who has a who uh, oh. likes to get a buzz with drinking or, or drugs or likes roller coasters mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. It's like, I feel here, how can I take it here? Oh. What I know to take me here, 
before is, well, I'll get ice cream, I'll do the things that I like doing. Oh, right? that But then makes I've got sense. this awesome, I feel so great, I'm gonna make this even better because I can't possibly feel good doing this. I'm so used to doing this. If I combined it together, <laughs> then voila, I am like living my best life. That makes sense. Right? I never thought of that. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, for sure. Oh. Yeah, so that's one. You're a smart guy. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that's that's one way that occurs. Wow. Um, but yeah, I can see that, it, you know what, it's just like, um, you know how they say beauty is in the eyes of the beholder? It's right. all about what you believe is right or wrong, what makes you feel good, what makes mm -hmm. you feel bad, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm so sick and tired of sabotaging, it's like, what do we do with that emotion of being sick and tired of sabotaging? Yeah. Right? Like, why do we do why it? Why do we do it? It's, so subcon it's like, it's unconscious. Right. We don't know that it's, it's happening. Like one of the tricks I do with people that have self-sabotage, I'm like, all right, well, let's pull the sabotage out and let's make it different from you, like apart from yourself. Let's give it a name or like just call it Sabo for sabotage or right, Sabo, right, right, you know, or whatever right. you want, right? Right. And then there's all different reasons why it's with you. Sabotage can help you, it can guide you, whatever it is. But you want to pull it outside of you so you can just ask it questions, right? You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's, like, it's like, for example, how would we sabotage not shooting this video today and not making this meal? Take me through the steps on how we would sabotage that. How would we sabotage it? Yeah. I don't know. How would we stop the progress of the success of the completion of the goal? Shoot a video, give the people some knowledge, uh -huh. and not make it. And this. not make it. Oh, yeah. they would be mad. How, but how can we do that? We just stop making it. We just or stop. We, or we just stop or we just cut the, the thing off. Then why would we do that? I don't know. Why would we do that? Why would you do it? I don't know. Think about it. This um, seems crazy to do uh, it. To make them come back again and see another video? Well, well, I don't know. That's just like a method of manipulation. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but isn't that sabotaging though? Isn't that a method of manipulation? It, well, that would be conscious, right? Mm. So what I want to do is make the, make the thing that you're doing that is stopping or impeding your progress Conscious, not subconscious. Oh, I get it. So when you said it. I don't like the reward system, because when I do that, I'm giving myself a little bit of play wiggle room yeah. that might turn into something bigger. Yeah. So I can't do that because when I do that, then the wrong thing happens. Right. The wrong thing's happening anyway. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? So now we want to actually make yeah, it a yeah, conscious yeah, thought. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know what? What I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna totally gain three pounds. That's my goal. <laughs> <laughs> Before right. it just smacks you upside the head and says right. you're gonna do the things that are gonna make you gain right. three pounds. Just come up with the intention. I plan on lose, uh, gaining three pounds today. I'm doing it. Right. How crazy does that sound? Right. Like if we just stop right now, <laughs> that makes zero sense. <laughs> yeah. And I drove down wow. here from here from Stanford. Right. We had everything prepared. Right. And we're just like, nope, not doing yeah, it. Yeah. Right. That doesn't make sense. Mm. Do you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Knowledge for you guys. <laughs> Dropping knowledge. Dropping it. Dropping yeah, yeah, yeah. it. So we got the ground beef right now, we got the garlic, we got the chopped onions, and you got some Italian seasoning in there. This is very simple. Yeah, Did you put simple. eggs or anything in there? I don't put eggs in there. Do you have the Worcestershire sauce? Do you yes, have any I do. Sauce yes, I do. Or anything like that? Just for like a little flavor. Just gonna go put that in there, and we just ball up the meatballs together. I really don't do the egg. Um, yeah, perfect. So yeah, okay. so that's, that's one thing of the sabotage. But we also want to look at the intention or the energy behind the sabotage. Like why did it show up, right? So sometimes people sabotage their success or their goals because of a feeling of feeling undeserved. Yeah. Or like they don't, they're yeah. not supposed to have it or success isn't theirs. Fear? Fear can be something too, but mm -hmm. fear of what? Fear of? Failing? Could be fear of failing, yeah. Also fear of the expectation of hope. Mm. Right? It's like, okay. oh my gosh, if I start getting, like in this situation, if I start getting more healthy, if I start getting thinner, then I gotta keep it up and have all these expectations for myself. Mm. And how do I act when I go to a party? What if I go to my family's house and you see that I'm on a diet? Does that mean I'm right, not right, one of right, them now? Right, right, I think right. I'm better than them? I don't think I'm better than anybody. Right. I don't wanna hurt anybody's feelings. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm going to eat different, my husband's going to complain, my wife's going to complain, oh my, gosh. my kids going to complain. How do I shop? How do I do this? This is a lot of pressure to be healthy. I want to go back to what I know. Right, right, right. Right? And right. If, now if you're cool with, let's just say, I'm, let's just say like in these categories, like you're here, when you do well, you get here. I'm talking about the size of somebody, right? Uh -huh. So I'm here, I do what I take to get here. I have no idea what it's like to be here. Right. I'm going to go to what I know. 
here, 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 right, here, right, here. Right. Yeah. Now I have a baseline. It's a yo-yo, right? Yo-yo, yeah. yeah. And you probably have something in your mind to where it's like, it's never gonna get worse than this. But you just don't know how much better it can yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it might be as like, you know what? I'm never gonna get over said weight. That's never gonna happen. When I see that, I don't care if I don't want to diet, I'm freaking dieting and getting under that line ASAP. Right. Do you have something like that in your head where you absolutely won't let yourself get a certain dress size, pants size? I weight? don't have that in my head. Uh, okay. Oh, you mean as far as going up? Up. Yes. Yes. Up. yes. Like that's yes. the limit. Yes. Max. Yes. Yes. I got do. It. I do. So right now I'm about in be I'm playing between a 16 and an 18 size. Okay. But there was a, t a time where I hit a 20. Okay. And I freaked out. Freaked out. Freaked out. I was like, oh my god. Oh my God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like 300 pounds and I started to panic. But tell me what know? that is though. So I'm going to be 300 pounds. What does that say about you? That you're going, you're on your way to being 300 pounds. What does that say about I you? I feel like, I felt like if I did that, I would be completely out of control. Okay. Like then, then there's no holding, then there's no pulling me back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Type of thing. Right. So the fear of that helped me to control it a little bit. Not too much. Right. I mean, I only ended up losing like, 20 pounds or so, okay. but um, but then I stayed, now I'm stuck here uh -huh. in that comfortable place that you're talking about, right? right? But I'm not that comfortable anymore. Okay. And I think it's because I'm 47, okay. I'm getting older, and I'm getting a little bit more fearful right. of like, you know, being ill, you gotcha. know? And I'm not ill, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. I just went to see a naturopath. Good. But um, I'm like right at the bottom of a cusp of being pre-diabetic. Got it. You know, bad mm -hmm. LDL, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, and I have a high risk of heart disease. Okay. So, you know, like now I'm like, okay, maybe it's time to stop playing games okay. and do something about this. But I actually have fear. I have fear that I will fail. Yeah, fear you will fail. Yeah. Got I it. have fear that I'm going to lose the weight and then gain it back double. Okay. that's what happened to me many years ago. Sure. Got it. Okay. Take me back to a time where you also had fear and you had no idea what the outcome would be, but you know that you were gonna get whatever that outcome is. Yeah, so that happens a lot in my life because I'm a, I'm a driven person. Okay. That's funny that you mentioned that because I always used to say when I'm afraid of something, I, that's what makes me even do it more. But when it comes to weight, that's not the, the outcome. Okay. So for instance, career. Yep. I quit my job, went back to school to be full-time, to be a chef. Mm -hmm. And I was scared as crap, mm -hmm. right? But I did it anyway. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and even like, you know, uh, building a restaurant from scratch. Never really did it, mm -hmm. but felt like I might have the know-how, and I did, and I did extremely well. You're right? So, yeah, and yeah. that's the thing. When it comes to, like, like uh, you know, I'm writing my book, I was extremely afraid of writing it. My mm -hmm. family would hate me. Nobody would talk to me, that type of thing, you know? But then it was, is the risk of helping others bigger mm -hmm. than the risk of your family not speaking to you? And the answer was yes. And Got so it. I published the book. And people didn't well, talk to me, like that was fine. sounds like the reward of helping people is yeah. bigger than the risk. And of... that's what memoirs is though. That's what yeah. this is right now. Right. You know, this is me conquering my fear mm -hmm. and I really facing up against something at the same time being accountable to these guys. Yeah. You know? It's great. And, you know, doing something that I normally would not be doing, you know? Sure. So, yeah, that's what this is. Got it. No, yeah. I love it. It's scary. It's scary. <laughs> it's scary. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost as if when it came to the big steps, the big leaps that you're going to take in your life, mm -hmm. it was like you had this hand right here. Here's the big steps I'm going to take, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to open up a restaurant. I'm going to quit my full-time job, be a chef. I'm going to help people, blah, blah, blah. And then here was the fear. And it's on a balance beam. Right. Okay? They exist together. It's almost like when it comes to your weight loss, you're not allowed to also have fear and actually take the actions to do it. It's like you want to take yeah. it out, off, and it's like, boom. Like, yeah. why can't fear coexist at the same time? I know. When it comes to this? I, don't, I don't know. And I think that's what I'm trying to figure out, right? Because that's why I have these self sabotaging behaviors. I'll be right. fine and I'll do fine. Mm -hmm. And I know I have the knowledge, Chris. Here's the thing I know I have the knowledge, maybe not all the knowledge. I'm not a professional like you, but I have enough knowledge to know what my body likes and doesn't like. Yep. You know? Okay. I have enough knowledge to know that um, for me, a low carb diet 
works really well. Okay. You know, because I've tried all of them. Right, right, right. right. I yeah, have a lot of some books. research. I have a lot of books. The research, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I tried keto for a little bit, but I actually honestly could not maintain the ketosis. Okay. You know? That's tough um, one for people to do. That's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. that was hard. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. but so, you know, so what I'm trying to figure out is why? Why do fat people do that? Do you guys have anything to say? Please do go ahead and make a comment and tell me what you think. Well, but, I think one thing is labeling yourself as a fat person. Well, this is the thing. That's one thing. But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a bone to pick with that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we have gone off the deep end with being too politically correct. Sure. Right? Yeah. So. I want to catch something right there. I feel like. You didn't say, I think like, I feel like. Okay. This is emotional judgment that you're about to make. Okay. Okay, so that might be to how you've been feeling your entire life. So let's hear it, though. You feel like what? <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> um, no, no, here's the deal. Yeah. For a long time, it was, oh, no, you're you're so pretty. Uh, you're just plus size. You're just big boned. Mm -hmm. You're just, you know, a fluffy. You're just you know, all those things. And I'm like, no, actually, I want to lose fat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I have a lot of fat on my body, about 70 to 80 pounds, I think. Okay. I'm going, after um, we are done here, I have another episode to shoot, which is I'm going to be on this machine that does your water weight, okay. fat, yeah, muscle, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah. Mm -hmm. So then I'll really know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah we got that in fat burn too. So we, that's people people don't like spacing the phase of those facts. Anyway. So here's the, the reason Memoirs of a Fat Girl came out, and the reason I said F-A-T as fat, not because I'm insulting anybody nor myself, sure. but because I want to look at the things I'm afraid of, mm. right? And one of the things I'm afraid of is, is, you know, I'm always hiding the fact that I'm fat. So we're always plus size, we're always other things. But the oh. truth is, is there is a lot of fat, and we have to lose it or we will die, right? right. Like, there's no joke about this so now, right? Truth. Right. Yeah, you want to put so, truth out in the forefront, put... vulnerable. Exactly. It's like, I yeah. am fat. Right, I'm fat, fat and yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. This is where I am. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's just the same way as saying I'm Puerto Rican. I'm okay yeah. with that, you know? Do fat people sabotage your success? Do fat people sabotage who? Their success, their own success. Yeah, I think so. Who does not sabotage their own success? I don't know if anybody doesn't. Do people not sabotage? Here's the thing. I remember listening to um, uh, Anthony Bourdain. Mm -hmm. And before he killed himself, he did an interview and he said, now that I've reached everything I've had to reach in my life, what next? Mm. And then he killed himself, right? And I feel like him doing that to himself sabotaged himself and sabotaged many people that were following him. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think that we all have like this thing where we can sabotage, right? Sure. Yeah. Yes, because we really didn't define our own personal success definition mm -hmm. in whatever mm -hmm. area that is in, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if you're always chasing, like I think with him, he's like, I did everything there is to do in life. Maybe his success definition didn't align to something outside of himself that's even bigger. Bigger, right. It's like, what? Like you're doing this right now to be held accountable, but to right. also help other people that are struggling. Now right. you're creating the tribe of other people right. who don't want to do this alone and love the transparency of Yes, exactly how I feel. What is up? Right. Like stuff like that. Right. So to call it true, I get it. When I was saying like, you know, labeling somebody as fat, I'm not talking about being politically correct. I'm talking about why is it in terms of sat? Why are we talking about sabotaging this also? So these I am statements. Okay. So I am fat. That means therefore I am not skinny or I'm not thin or I am not fit. I'm on my way to being fit. Right. I want to be fit. But I'm not fit, therefore I'm fat. No, I have fat. I have challenges around sabotage. Mm -hmm. I have challenges around eating when I'm lonely. Mm -hmm. I have challenges with eating when I'm angry or frustrated at work. The problem is not I am fat. I have challenges around managing my moods. That's the issue. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, the yeah. thing. Like I, I, I agree with you. I don't, I don't actually think that the issue is that I am fat, yeah. right? I think the issue is that I have a lot of fat and I need to lose it. And so the, for me, the first, the way I always approach things is by taking the bulls by the horn, right? Mm -hmm. So if that's what I am right now is currently I'm fat, I gotta deal with that. Yeah. I have fat and I have to deal with it. You know so what I'm saying? So what happens when you need fig newtons? What do you mean what happened? You grab the bull by the horns. Yeah, and, and I ate the, the whole, let the bull go. Oh God, let him go, go I let him go. But I wasn't paying attention. 
attention. Why? Because I, I wasn't paying attention. You were paying attention. I so you wasn't got distracted. paying attention. Yeah, I was working on the computer and completely mindless eating. Completely mindless eating. You think eating. it was just automatically showing up? Automatically on showed up on my desk. <laughs> Dude, are these big enough? Yeah. Those okay. Are great. Those, okay. Those are great. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what do you think about when it comes to sabotage? Some people punish themselves for not succeeding. Doing it as a punishment. Yeah, I think that um, I do that actually. I you think, do that. I think I do that. Then there, if there's mornings where I'm like, oh, I don't have time, I don't do that, and I run. Yeah. I go to work, and I'll either not eat at all because I'm not a big eater, believe it or not. Right. Um, but I won't eat at all like all day until maybe late lunch, like three o'clock in the afternoon or something like that. Got it. Or if I start off bad, let's say um, somebody made pancakes. Yep or waffles or whatever have you. If I start off already eating that, it's almost like I go, well, I already I already messed up. Might as well do the whole day that way. You know, like, like and, and I might not say it, mm -hmm. but it is subconsciously what I'm doing, you know? So you need so to be that, there all, all the way on or all the way off? Yeah, like, like I feel like you, that's you how I perfect. am, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I'm like that with everything. Like even in school, if it wasn't 100, if I was getting a 98, I was crying. Got you it. know, like, I don't know what that is, but well, perfectionism. Yeah. 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 Perfectionism is a lot of people have perfectionism yeah. and it drives them to make irrational decisions, mm -hmm. either or statements. Either or. It's like, why can't you have pancakes and get back on the same track within the same day? Yeah. Why, why not? Why can't they exist? It's like, I had pancakes. So therefore, I'm going to take the action to take back control. Right. I'm already out of control. Right. Right. It's right. not like I ate pancakes. And I'm looking forward to working out later. Yeah. I ate pancakes and I'm gonna have a really healthy lunch. Yeah. I don't know. Right, it's a habit. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It, it is, yeah. Our brain is literally wired for binary decisions. Either or. Even in sales, they love doing that. Here's this one, here's this one. Which one works for you? Either right. or. Right, right. Or they like to stack it. Here's here, here, here. You have three choices. Best, you know, good, and then you know, whatever. Whatever they want to do. And your brain's like I take the one in the middle. Right. It's like a process is super fast. It's right. Like, I'm, not, I'm not all in. I'm definitely not all out. I don't right. actually think I'm not committed. Right. I'm going in the middle. Is that what the average people do? I want to be like everybody else. Right. Right. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So our mind is binary. Oh good, bad, black, white, right, wrong, safe, not safe. Like this is what we're wired for fight or flight mm. survival. Right. So mess up, might as well mess all the way up. Do it again tomorrow. And yeah. Then, and then the and then the feeling of feeling guilty, not yeah. worthy, can't do it, not in the cards. It's only in the cards for me to skip my pancakes if I get to 300 pounds. Then watch me diet my bleep off. <laughs> Now all of a sudden the fear until I'm back to until I'm back to comfortable. Until you're Not back even to healthy, comfortable. Just comfortable. Yeah. So then it's like, what's the next success definition? If your de definition of success is at this level, but you want to be here, it's the work that's from here to here. So what is success here? Right. What's appealing about it, and what's scary about it, and what's overwhelming about it? Your best ideal self is someone who has the. What I'm hearing you say is. I am limitless. My best ideal self is someone who does not have limitations. Yes, health-wise though. See, here's the thing. I right. think my goals have changed as I got older. Yep. So instead of being somebody who wants to uh, just lose weight to look good, yep. I actually just want to be healthier. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's the honest truth. So what's, you know? that? what's healthier? Healthier means getting up with no pains and being like more energetic and being able to sustain more, not getting winded, going up a flight of stairs. You know, I just want to feel my best self mm -hmm. and I don't know what that is. Right, so here's another point. If you've never created this type of identity, there's no GPS for your, your yourself to get to. Right. There's no ways app. There's no right. something right, to right. plug in. This is how you go, right. right? If you've never been in your version of healthy, this, that, and the third, then you don't know what it feels like, then obviously you're going to sabotage yourself because it's not in the cards for you. Mm -hmm. It's like this feedback loop. It's like, we know what it's like to lose 20 pounds. We know what it's like to lose 25 pounds. We also know what it's like to gain it back. This is what you know. Yeah. You don't know the new thing yet. Right. What you need to do is really say, you know what? I understand that part, and now I want to get here. 
What are the things required to be able to be a runner? What does a runner do? Is a runner committed? Yeah. Maybe a runner's committed. Yeah. What also <laughs> does a runner do? I know what a runner has, but what do they do to be able to become a runner? Well, they eat healthier, right? Okay. They watch what they eat for their bodies. So you watch what they eat, yep. They, um, well, yes, okay, and they're committed, so no matter if they're tired or anything, they have to set their brain up to still do it, even if they don't want to. Okay. Because I've, I've spoken to runners who say, I don't wake up every day wanting to run. Yeah. You know? Well, you want to be a runner or somebody who has the capability to run? I would like to run. I don't know what that means yet. So let's define it. Yeah, so I would like to be the person who would get up in the morning, pop on some sneakers, and go for a run. Got it. You know, like, sure. I, that's always, like, been a desire. I've never really had that. To, I never really did it. Yeah. Um, I, when I was younger, yes. But, I mean, we're talking, I'm 47. So it's been sure. over 20 years. So you, you don't know? have the desire to do that. I have the desire. You have the desire. I just don't have the wherewithal and the oomph to get myself from the thought process to the doing it. Yeah, the thought, skipping over the emotion, and the action. Yeah. You're not attached to the emotion because you don't even know what that emotion even exactly, feels like. Exactly, yeah. Understood. So it's like I think about it. Yeah. And I think about it. Okay. <laughs> right in my head. I see myself running. I see my sneakers. I see me going on the pavement in the, my, with my ear, air, earphones on and it stopped right you gotta You got to crawl before you walk. Yeah. So well, you got to walk before you run. Yeah, exactly. But why don't I get, why, it, so that's my... That's my wall. Like, why aren't I getting up? I have a full gym downstairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this I is. I haven't touched it in it's months. It's in you, right? Yeah. You got the visualization, the center, the third. Is it on a planner? Did you put something down on paper? No. Defining your your success definition. So this is one step that you can do. You guys can do All this right. too. I do this a lot. I'm gonna of flip these. Tell them. Yeah. Tell them. <laughs> so when you're thinking about your best ideal self. Right? And maybe you don't even believe it's in the cards for you or not, but there are some things that you do want to experience, right? Mm -hmm. Whether that's more peace, more health, more energy, joy, um, you want to be more clear, um, productive, whatever it is. What I want you to do is pick three words, right? Three words. And commit to these three words and ask yourself these que this question at the end of the day. Was I blank today? So, or did I show blank today? Something like that. It's okay. direction focus. It's setting the intention for the next morning and doing a nighttime review. So for example, was I organized today? Was I grounded today? Mm -hmm. Was I committed today? When you can answer all three of those with a yes, you're gonna have your best sleep and you're gonna wake up the next day to wanna repeat it again because experiencing those emotions, the next <laughs> day you're gonna be like, I want some more of that because I wanna feel the same exact way. Just like somebody drinks a little bit, gets a buzz, has a little wine, mm -hmm. they want to get some more of that the next time they have that dish with some wine because it was a great feeling. So you have to identify the feeling you want to experience mm -hmm. instead of the feelings landing on you, derailing you from your success. That makes sense, right? So if you're thinking about your best ideal self, you said the noun, runner. That's too, it's too ambiguous, it's too, yeah, it's too vague. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you say a runner is committed, maybe that's one of the words you want to ask yourself at the end of the day. Oh, you also I said committed healthy. today? Yeah, was I committed today? Okay. And then you write down on a piece of paper, you know what, I can't be committed to all things today, but I can be committed to the things that are very important to me. Am I committed to my audience? Probably are. You're mm -hmm. going to do steps to commit to them, right? Mm -hmm. Am I committed to walking the talk? Right? Am I committed to my health? What am I committed to today? This is what I'm going to do. I commit to just putting my sneakers on, walking to the end of the block, and walking back. First step. Is it ridiculous? You just make the judgment on that if you want. I recommend don't making a judgment on it. I recommend catching all the little, little wins that you can, so when you're at the end of the day, you can answer that question, mm. yes, so I was I committed. Did I go for a walk today? Did I do what I was going to do? do right basically so you're, you're setting up your your evening to, to for your goals basically and yes. then the next day seeing if you've accomplished yes. some of those goals or Correct. all of them so it's morning intention done in the evening evening reflection the next day did I do it did I not do it okay how can I do it so you do your better. intention in the morning you do your intention at you do your intention at night 
Okay, that's so what, at that's night what you're making okay. attention for the next morning, okay, and that same night it's the evening reflection. Okay, did I do them? What can I have done better to be able to do them if I said no? So journaling, yeah. basically. Journaling is like key. Okay, it's key to people who are. I guess that's why Weight Watchers were always successful because of that too. You used to have to journal with Weight Watchers. Oh, okay. And when I was with them, because uh -huh. I told you I did everything, I wasn't kidding. I did everything. Um, I actually uh, was more successful when I was journaling than when I fell off of journaling, see? Sure. I was more successful with walking when I was accountable to you yep. when I was walking. Yeah. You know? Well, accountability is huge. That's why you're literally doing this. Yes. So you this know the is power, literally why I'm doing this. You know the this. power yeah. of accountability. Yeah. Um, and then um, journaling, like two, two, two different preferences for people on how they learn experiences and make judgments on those experiences in their head. You can be more extroverted or more introverted. More extroverted people, they're used to extroverting things out loud, bouncing ideas off of yeah, people, right. seeing what happens. When you do that, and it's always like a faucet, like, ah, yeah. you sometimes you just lose the important stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have to capture that down in a journal. Let's say an introverted person that just keeps it all inside, they need to extrovert it out and write it down. Right, right. Right. They might be more careful what they extrovert out because they're introverted. So capture those things so it's not all ruminating in the head. Right. Extroverted people just get it all out, but we might miss the really important things. Right. And if we're driven for other people, it's all about other people's needs, getting that's, it met. That's getting exactly it met. how I run. Yeah. I run on the needs of other people. Yeah. yeah. I'm always thinking about them. I'm always thinking about my husband, my kids. Sure. And and I'm extroverted. And so um, that happens. You lose yourself. You lose yourself because you're right. like you're focused on them, right? So, say my husband doesn't want to go for a walk, but I really want to walk with him. So I'll just sit home with him and watch a movie instead. Sure. You know, right? Um, even though I really wanted to go for the walk, but that's just I don't know. It's naturally what I do, and I also think it's that, and also finding an excuse, right? Sometimes you become the master of excuses, mm. you know? Or just rationalizing. Yeah, rationalizing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, rationalizing why it's a good idea to do this and you take the action. Mm -hmm. Rationalizing why this is also a good idea, you don't take the action and you think about it later, like, man, I really should have went for that walk. If you're like, yeah. you know what? I want to connect with my husband right now. Yeah. I want to sit on the couch. But wait, I have this goal. It's not like I'm going to not connect with him later when I get back. Right. I want connection and I want to do something healthy. <laughs> hmm. Which yeah. one can, so I want to win-win here, right. right? But which one can I say, I want to get the win for me first and secure the win for him second. Right. I don't want him to miss out on anything. Right. I want him to feel good, but not at the expense of me. Okay. Because people who give, 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 it's always about, you're good, you're good, you're good. Like, you okay, you okay, you okay, I'm good, don't worry about it. But when you start not feeling good and it starts feeling a little bit like an obligation or you yeah. feel a little bit guilty, then that's where you stop and say, okay, what about me? Right. And give yourself permission to say, I'm going to do what I need to do so I can be okay in this situation. Right. Yeah. Wow, you're giving us too many, too many nuggets. <laughs> a lot of nuggets. I'm going to have to write all this down for you guys. That's it. That's um, it. One of the things I wanted to show you guys before we keep continuing, because the I hear the meatballs sizzling away in there, so they're going to be ready in any in no time, uh -huh. is that we have this amazing um, zucchini noodle that we got from Whole Foods. But a lot of places sell them, actually. I've seen them in ShopRite. I've seen them in Stop and Shop. So, but they are basically noodles that are already spiralized zucchini. Mm -hmm. um, and I already have a spiralizer because I love spiralized zucchini. So hopefully this will work for us. But what you do is you put it through. This is actually a thicker noodle. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It's, it, there's different blades for this thing, but this stuff is so good to have. This was only like 30 bucks on like uh, Amazon, but it's worth it because if you guys like having like um, healthier foods, you could even do this with like potatoes too, right? So mm -hmm. like a sweet potato. Yeah. You take the sweet potato and what you do is you um, put it in the microwave for like Mm, about a minute or so it softens it up a little bit for you so when you put it through the machine it just goes right through yeah so i just wanted to show you guys that because I, I love this kind of stuff this is yeah, awesome good. So i'm gonna leave you guys with some questions that you can ask yourself yes. about sabotage right yes i want to be able to articulate them correctly so i wrote them down all right so at the beginning when we were talking if we made sabotage outside of yourself and named it right you can call it savvy sabo you can call it oh, yeah. a name after mm -hmm. anything just call, don't call it a name after somebody that you know, all right? 
So you can <laughs> ask somebody you hate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you can ask it like this. So what is it that when I am on my way to going towards my goals, what is it that tricks you, um, triggers you, Sabo? What triggers you? It's like you kind of like talk to it and write it down in your journal. Okay. Right? So what would you say if you were just talking to your saboteur? What triggers your saboteur? What triggers my saboteur? I have to get into the mindset of this thing, right? So he's like an external person. What's oh, a he? <laughs> you see how he analyzes huh. everything? Yeah. I, I just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you said Sabo. It reminded me of a dude. It reminded me of a dude. It's going to be Sabo. It's going to be Sabo? I think it's okay. a dude. Like Sabo? Okay, it's a dude. Gotcha. Sabo, what triggers him, right? So mm -hmm. what triggers Sabo? Boredom. Okay. Um, frustration, anger, um, and feeling less than. Wow. So, yeah. So, like, if if I uh, am short on my on, on finances, mm -hmm. it triggers Sabo. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because and that makes uh, that makes him feel like he's inadequate. He should have had more. He's not, you know, carrying his weight or doesn't have enough. Gotcha. That kind of thing. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So there's so a something. fear of lacking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's something you would want to write down in the journal. Okay. And how can we suffice that part? Okay. Right? So the saboteur, so usually what will be your behavior or action that you take after that trigger wakes up Sabo? What, what I, would happen? Uh, I get a, a, uh, a mentality of effort. You okay. know, and then I'll just, I'll either go to the store, I'll go get some ice cream, or I'll get a bag of chips. So you go to eat, you go eat, yeah. Shut your yeah. emotional yeah. eating. Yeah. Right, and it seems like the things that are fun. Yeah. I'm bored, right? Yeah. Boredom triggers Sabo. Sabo's like, hey, yeah, what's up? Yeah. We're bored, right? Yeah. Let's go get some fun. This yeah. is boring. Yeah. Got that. Yeah. So that's what happens. Or it's like, oh, finances are low. Dang, finances are low. This is out of control. Right. We hate being out of control. Yeah. How about we take control of that? You know what we can do? We can go feel better and really take control of being uncontrolled by going and doing some uncontrollable behavior. That would feel awesome. Let's go take control back. So in it's our like hands. a reverse control. It's almost so like you're controlling us. You're controlling the out of control. I'm the one that says right, I'm out of control. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. right? It's like, you know what I can do? I can easily, it's not difficult to get in my car and go buy something. Right? Or I'm make something. It. I'm going yeah. to do it. Right. Yeah. 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 So that makes sense. Yeah. So the saboteur or sabo is in help of you always. He is always there to help you. When you don't feel good, when you feel worthless, when you feel like you just are dumb, like I can't believe I got this finances wrong. How did I do that? Right. I'm so meticulous with it and I got this wrong. Oh my gosh, what's going on? Right. Right? It's like there to make you feel better. Let's feel better. It's okay. Don't worry about it. We will take back control right now. <laughs> we know exactly what That's to do. That's a different way to look at it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Instead of hating him. Right. Or hating yourself. Right. Or hating yourself. a part yourself. of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But when you say instead of hating you because you love doing things for other people so right. much, make this another person right. that you can serve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second question. What is in it for you when Sabo shows up? What's oh, the win -win? I get to have no responsibility. Oof. That's relieving. Yeah. I get to have no responsibility. I get to just do, do it. Yeah. So what that is, is a victim. Oh shit, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! Yeah, yeah. I hate victim mentality. Mm -hmm. Hey, wow. Yeah. Wow, that's really interesting. It's interesting because I've always prided myself, if you will, on not being the victim because I was a victim for a lot of like abuse in my life, yeah. right? So I've always like, I will not live in a victim mentality, but I almost took that on, I guess, as a victim mentality. I never thought of that. Yep. That's very interesting. Ah! I get it! Uh -huh. I get it! Ah! A little uh -huh. light bulb just went off! Good! <laughs> That's awesome! Got it. So then the third question, this is going to go play right into uh -oh. that. What type of energy attracts Sabo? Um... Oh, anger, frustration, uh, negative. negative, negative, yeah, Correct. negative, yeah. yeah, like imploding, yeah, restricting. Yeah. So you actually said something that's one level up higher than feeling like a victim. 
you said anger, you said frustration. What that type of energy looks like, feels like, talks like, acts like is conflict consciousness. Mm -hmm. Fight. Right. You are in the flight, fight, survival response when you sabotage yourself. Mm -hmm. You're in the fight, flight, survival response in this whole weight loss journey. Right. That's what it sounds like. Right. It's either we're going to be like a victim or we're going to fight to not be a victim and the next level up is rationalizing. Right. I deserve to have a cookie because right. I lost 20 pounds, I'm doing great. Mm -hmm. But if you really think about it and look at your notes and your research, I'm the type of person that can't have just one cookie. Nope. So when I do that, I'm going to wake up Sabo. Sabo's going to come. Right. And I know I trick myself and I lie to myself saying, not this time, this time, I can have the cookie. <laughs> right. I'm you're rationalizing, like, you're it, rationalizing yeah. it. But maybe you say, you know what, I want to be the person that can just have one or two cookies. But right now, I've never experienced what it's like to be past this weight, past this size. Let me see if I get, when I get past this size, I'll attempt it then because that's the new research. And I know if I lose 40 pounds and if I aspire out one day, I'm not gonna gain all 40 back. Right. I'll gain that five back, that right. six back. But I'm so much far away from where I was. Right. It just starts changing your concept. I guess that's why writing it is so valuable. Yes, research. You gotta capture mm. it. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I guess that's why they say writing your goals down is important instead of just thinking or saying. Yes, well, yeah. yes, definitely yeah. write your goals down. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But always writing the thought behind the emotion, behind the action, that turns into a behavior over the long term. What are the thoughts that you're thinking to act the way that you act? That way, not everything is unconscious anymore. Right. And Sabo is actually in service to you. So when Sabo is trying to make you feel better and feel safe, give it a new job. Say, Sabo, this is what I want you to do. If you could like literally tell me to go downstairs, put my sneakers on and go for a walk, I would love that because I hate being bored. That won't make me feel bored. There's this one podcast I wanted to check out. And being that you're extroverted, you probably like learning new information mm -hmm. and stuff like that. If you didn't check it out before, now you're learning and you're walking, you're satisfying that part of your personality mm -hmm. that likes to collect new information. And think about it later. Maybe the whole thing is like, Savo, let's do this. Let's go downstairs, put my sneakers on, let's go for a walk, hear the new podcast. When I come back in, I'm gonna journal for 10 minutes on what I learned. I love that experience. That's a nice refresher, mm -hmm. that's a transition then you can get back to your regular day that you already do anyway. Right. Yeah. And that's, a, I guess, a way to control that behavior. So every time that behavior or that feeling pops up, that's what you go to. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I could try. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then preserving your energy around not, not getting involved in the drama of other people because I believe that you're probably an empathetic person. I am. And, and you feed and off other people, but yeah. you want to help them. And when they're happy, the you're happy. Yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> the psychic as well. It's different levels to this stuff. Oh, this one's amazing. I'll tell you why I picked up on that too. There's a little trick. When I did like this, you can see it in the replay. She did the same thing right right after me like that. Oh, really? Yeah. So as I like, I was just here and I was like here, and you automatically were like, but I've been thinking about oh, wow. it because you're empathetic. Oh. oh yeah. This guy is smart. <laughs> I'm so happy I have him here. <laughs> So I just want to show you guys really quick. These are the meatballs. They came out already. They look amazing, right? Mm -hmm. I know, you're jealous. Hello. I gotcha. So I love that you're ha having this group for people and you're being vulnerable and uh, honest and open with them and pretty sure that's going to connect with them on a level to where they don't feel alone. Yes. And you know, hopefully, you know, my hope for you, my hope for your audience is that if they're struggling with uh, this transformation period, that there's, it takes effort and it's not that you're not worthy enough to be able to do it or it's not in the cards for you to do it. It's just that you need to have somebody to help you with your thinking and how to properly categorize your emotions and your thoughts to the behavior that you want to take and the current behavior that you're doing now in order to be able to, you know, get to your level of success. So it's definitely in the cards for everybody. Yeah. And just so gotta find, out how to find out how to do it. Yeah, I mean, I think he gave us a lot of great information today. Um, this recipe was really because it's a quick go-to for him, and I wanted to share it with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really like low in, low in fat, low in carbs, right? Um, and it's really quick and easy and really easy to get to. So I will link um, the meatball recipe for you guys on the bottom. 
of the description here. Guys. This looks good. Ooh, that look good there, boy. Hey, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, yes, I know. I am going to enjoy this meal. Mm -hmm. um, so we are going to go ahead and enjoy our meal. <laughs> yes. That looks good. I'll take a little tiny mm. bit. I'm not going to eat too much, but okay. I'm going to work out after. Yeah, cool. I am. I am. I'm working out. Awesome. Oh, wow. This looks really good. Guys, this yes. looks really good. I'm going to take a picture for it and put it right on the website there for you. Yes. Now, don't you guys... Um, you know, miss this or any other episodes coming up. Again, this is Chris from Coaching and Counseling okay. in Connecticut. Yeah. In Connecticut. Mm -hmm. You guys got to check them out. They're amazing. And just with the little time that we were here today, look at all of the information. So don't forget to journal. Don't forget to ask yourself the questions, mm -hmm. the self-sabotaging, why we do it. It was really an eye-opener. I can't wait. I'm going to actually re-watch this several times myself. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that, Chris. Thank Welcome. you for being here. Yes. Thank you for being here with my audience. Yeah, and thank you sure. for this really quick, easy yes, recipe. Definitely. I appreciate definitely. you. Definitely. You're welcome. I appreciate You're welcome. you. This is Nina Perez, and this is Memoirs of a Fat Girl, going from F-A-T to P-H-A-T in real time. <laughs> <I love it>. <laughs> <laughs>